And good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com where we sit down with the head coach of the Wabasee Warriors basketball program, Coach John Everingham. Coach, thanks for being with me this morning. All right, we got the coffee. We're uh, ready to go. Coach Kaz Zinal here as well. Let's start off by talking a little bit about uh, that Plymouth game last night. Clearly that didn't go the way you'd hoped. No, I, I don't think anybody... Um, I, You know, it's just a, it's kind of a difficult one to talk about because we... You know, in my mind, you, you certainly got to give credit to Plymouth and, and the way they played that defensively, you know, they threw some things at us that we hadn't really seen much of. And, and they were very patient, you know, with the basketball. They run their stuff. And, and um, we really felt like we could hold them to right around 40 points. Um, but I just, you know, um, I just didn't think we came out with the type of energy that you need on the road in the NLC to, to be able to win a basketball game. We, we took some plays off on the defensive end and, and just weren't real solid, you know, defensively. And then offensively, we're just relying on, you know, outside shots and, and had trouble getting the ball to the basket. You know, there's, there's a part of me that certainly knows that you got to give credit to the other team. Um, uh, but at the same time, I was expecting just a little more from our team. We, we had some rest. Uh, our legs were fresh in practice, and, and um, I, I really thought we'd come out with, with a little more energy than, than what we came out with. If you I could dig into that just one oh, second. Oh, go ahead. Coach. No, take your It I've... seemed like your team came out with the patience that you had uh, told them to have and that you had expected, and then that they, they kind of lost that patience as as. The, as the first half progressed and in the second half they just didn't have the patience that you had you had been preaching yeah and the 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 patience really was on the i thought on the defensive end because mm -hmm. they have longer possessions and and they just kind of wait for you to to make a mistake they run guys up from their post it's really hard to to get steals or or to uh, pressure the ball you know on the defensive end so you kind of got to be patient on the defensive end and let them run their stuff just keep them out of the paint um, but it just seemed like as the possessions kind of wore on that, that we um, we kind of laxed in our, you know, focus and, yeah. and energy. And so, you know, on the offensive end, uh, you know, the patients, we did pull the ball out just a little early. And that was a little bit of a strategic, you know, kind of a play because I know their coach pretty well. I thought, you know, if we could get a lead in the third or fourth quarter, we could we could get them to come out and pressure us just a little bit. Right, and right. so what happened is almost just the opposite is, mm -hmm. is we went to a one three one. We we went to our trapping stuff and and they pulled the game out at the end. I was envisioning almost the opposite happening um, where maybe we could be patient on uh, in the fourth quarter, pull them away from the basket and, and kind of hit them from behind. But, um, you know, sometimes you tip your cap and and. Uh, uh, you give credit where credit is due. They they played a, a good game. They've been really competitive. You know, we talked off air about Concord beating uh, Warsaw last night. Mm -hmm. and, and last week, you know, Plymouth had Concord down 39-38 late in the game. And um, um, unfortunately for them, didn't pull, pull it off. But, you know, Plymouth's got wins over Michigan City, a good Michigan City team. They got wins over uh, a good Elkhart team. And they've been super competitive. So it's like two teams that were – looking to get over the top you know right. last night and we took a halftime lead and in the third quarter kind of bit us a little bit you know i was looking at the just looking at the scores and when bill and i both said the same thing man that first quarter it was close it was 13 to 10 but you know maddox of the everingham variety I like that like they had two trays and weldy had a tray and i thought hey if we can hit the trays we're gonna you know build up a huge lead and that and then you know in the at halftime you know we were up 21 to 20 <clears throat> you know, one to 19 and that was that we thought hey you know we come out it's, it's going to go right to the very end yeah and i i thought we <laughs> we had an opportunity to to have a bigger lead than what we had yeah. you know and and um you know we did make some shots and i think i mentioned in in some of my keys is that um that making a few shots would be a big deal for us and right. we did we come out and maddox hit a couple threes wealthy hit a three but I think to be consistent over the course of 32 minutes is you have to establish some sort of inside game. and um, Because you know, the outside game, by its very definition, is not very consistent. That's correct. You yeah. know, and, and I think you can win some games that way, and, and it's just hard to be consistent you know, hitting that outside shot. Um, and, and you can see what happens when you, when you are hitting that outside shot. Oh you my. look great. Yeah. Um, yes. But when, when things start going into a lull, 
um, you have to have something to to rely on on the inside. And right. so that's I think that would be a point of emphasis as we move through next week with with three home games that we got to get the ball inside. You know, we got a six five post player in Colin uh, Robertson. Um, Keaton Dukes and and even some of our guards um, we've been working last week in practice of getting the ball inside but we just didn't take you know some of the the key points from from practice in the week um, into the game and and so um, just a little disappointed in that you know I, I had a good time watching <coughs> excuse me Dukes and Strain those two were living in each other's jerseys and every shot that either one of them took was contested I thought that was a, a huge key for, for both sides there. Yeah, and he, he, uh, Keaton Dukes obviously struggled a little bit on the offensive end, you know, really through three and a half quarters. Yeah. Um, um, I, and I'm not sure he scored in the first half there. And, and, you know, I told the kids after the game, too, we, we have some built-in excuses, but we're just not going to use them anymore. You know, I mean, so I'm not even going to go there now. I kind of want to, but I, I'm not going to. But, you know, with him coming back from injury and 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 um, us not seeing the floor for a couple of weeks, um, you know, I was proud of Keaton. And and the thing about Keaton's value is this: it's not just scoring the basketball. And so you bring up a good point in the way he guarded Strain. You know, he's a he's a key defender, mm-hmm. and he keeps other guys on key defenders as well. And so when he comes out of the game or when Wealthy gets in foul trouble, it kind of rotates everybody around. And to be perfectly honest, you know, we got a couple of freshmen that, that are trying to guard NLC all-conference guys. You yeah. know, and those guys go out of the game. So, you know, the lack of depth and, and the lack of ability to play defense from other guys on the floor other than our two seniors is a concern. When those guys leave the floor, my main concern is on the defensive end when the matchups get switched all the way around. And, you know, now you got a freshman guard and, you know, an NLC all-conference guy and, and Davis Ray, you know. So um, Keaton is a, is a key part of our, our, defensive, uh, our defensive matchups. And, and he did a good job, you know, last night on, on strain. Uh, again, an all-conference guy. But, um, but when those guys go out of the game, it just kind of shifts everything. And it didn't work out for us last night. That showed very well. Uh, in the uh, foul situation, I think Keaton only had two or maybe three fouls in the entire contest, whereas some of your other guys, their lack of patience that we discussed really showed up in the foul trouble that they ended up in yeah. either early or some of them a little later. But by the midpoint of the third quarter, you you had to be very aware of you were, you were in foul trouble. Yeah, and I mean, well, I think Welty had four fouls in yeah. the third quarter, but we just couldn't couldn't take him out of the game yeah. it just felt like if you take him out we we really lose a chance and you know we're we've we put a lot of tread on the tires or yep. a lot of miles on the car or whatever you want to whatever you want to say but you know the games have been so close yeah you know and so you're, you're like gosh do we want to take this guy out right now to get him some rest you know last night we we started the second quarter with um uh, weston hoffert right you know another freshman that we put in there and the reason we did that is just to try to get wealthy you know some rest and so um he's in the fourth quarter of some key games he's been just a little tired and so we're trying to find that that seventh eighth man that we can just get some a minute or minutes. two you know to give uh well to your rest so he, he's a little more fresh the truth is that most successful basketball teams don't work on six guys yeah maybe seven more likely eight that they rotate through yeah yeah you got to have eight guys and i've always said that uh, and you probably can get away with seven and um and maybe in one game yeah maybe yeah. in a sectional game you play five or six guys and and you get away with it but throughout the course of a season it's just almost impossible we're playing you know miles and maddox 30 plus minutes a game yeah. and as and freshmen as freshmen I mean, that just doesn't and, happen no and 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 keaton and welty you know averaging i think 29 or 30 minutes a game mm-hmm. it's it's just a lot of wear and tear and and the other thing that people don't that people that watch us play that that they probably don't consider is is the mental wear and tear as well oh and yeah so, that's huge you know we talked before about maybe some guys in the doghouse and then the, the, on in the same breath you know you got guys that just simply need a hug you know and and um you know that because the mental wear and tear of of what you go through in a season, especially for young kids, it's a lot to put on, you know, to put on kids. And so I, 
do my very best to to take some of that pressure and weight off of them as as an adult, as mm-hmm. a head coach, and and I take responsibility for the way we play. But um, you know, those those are things you just have to manage as a head coach. Yeah, you have a lot of kids playing too. Yeah, just looking at the roster here, and let's see, you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven kids uh, got time last night, and uh, maybe it was more than that. But anyhow, I like your rotation. You sit there and do you? I not sit there, but you're discussing it yeah. with your with your co arts there, and then you make the decision, and then it, it seems like it's always almost always paid off. Yeah, and, and it, you know whether you win or lose, it is paying off for us right now because you know <laughs> we're we're getting some experiences that are going to be very valuable as we go through, you know, the next three or four years. To be right. perfectly honest, you know, and and so Weston Hoffer gets his first you know varsity action, and I was kind of. Uh, giving his dad, you know, a little bit of a hard time because he gets in there and he's so nervous that he he held the ball on his hip for about a good solid half second or a full second. They didn't call a double dribble, but it's a lot of pressure to yeah. get in there and, and perform, you know, when you're a freshman. And um, I was glad we got him the opportunity. He's been practicing really well. Um, he's been getting it done on the defensive end, uh, playing a good solid, you know, good solid JV season and so excellent far. Excellent JV game last night. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And Robbie Finlinson is another kid oh, that, yeah. that we've gotten. Uh, we've gotten him some varsity minutes last night. He played a little bit, little bit last night. But you could at the Garrett game, we got him two or three minutes. So sure. we're going to start to kind of move those guys in for, mm-hmm. for stretches of two or three minutes and and certainly you can see um i know we're talking about the plymouth game but you certainly can see when you got four freshmen that are producing you yeah, know right. big time um statistical numbers uh, two on the varsity and two on the jv um those are certainly reasons to be very excited about you know next year and the years beyond um and and I know for the sake of our seniors and those are things that you know we'll talk about later on. But um, it certainly bodes well for the experiences that they're getting. Yeah, go ahead, Bill. Well, I was I was just going to wrap up the segment by reminding everybody that we've got the um, uh, basketball, the um, free throw shooting contest mm-hmm. coming up at Wabasi High or to Wabasi <laughs> Middle School. <laughs> Uh, today, Coach, of course, that's been your baby since yeah, uh, you forever, and Dr. Yeah, Smith invented type, it back in the 1870s. Yeah, type the dinosaur. Uh, yeah. Uh, so talk a little bit about well, your free throw contest. It's, it's uh, really interesting. The Kiwanis and, uh, got together with us a long time ago. So it was the Kiwanis and the Knights of Columbus. And we put on the, the Kiwanis does uh, a, a shoot. Hot shot. Hot shot shoot. Thank you, Bill. And they put marks on all the places, and they'll set the clock in a minute. And it's from first to sixth grade. Mm-hmm. So it's really fun to watch these kids shoot. And their parents, oh, man, they, to watch them in the stands. And then the uh, – uh, free throw is from kids age uh, 9 through 14 just the way it's done and that's done on a state level and we've had a couple kids go all the way to state hmm. so we'll have a regional and a, and a district and then uh, move down to the state usually somewhere in indianapolis where the state finals is held so it's kind of a neat thing and it's uh it's a it's a lot of fun to put on and that's going on uh, registration is at two and you start shooting at 2 30 today i guess right Thank you, Bill. And we and if you are listening and you want some more information about that, we did post some information on the Wawasee Boys Basketball Facebook page and uh, Twitter. So super. If you're into social media and you want to learn more about that, you can you can visit well, our. Thank you very much. Media. Appreciate yeah. that, Coach. We're coming back. We've got a couple of young men going to join us. We're going to talk to uh, Peyton Felger and Jay Finlinson from the basketball program coming up here in just a moment on Coach's Corner on ninety three point seven FM The Mix and nine three seven The Mix. Dot com. And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. Talking basketball now with Wabasi High School basketball player Jay Finlinson. Jay, thanks for coming in this morning. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me here. You had a pretty decent night last night. Came out, put in some minutes for uh, Wabasi at the Plymouth game. Talk about what you see as your role uh, currently on the uh, varsity basketball program um i think i'm put at a good spot right now to come off the bench and do some solid minutes for our team and just if coach asked me to do something i'll come in and do it for him do you see yourself more as a guard or more of a post player talk about what what role you fill when you come on the floor um this year i've been switched to more of a big guy in the post and so it's a little different because I mostly have been playing guard, but I'm starting to get used to it and get the hang of it. 
what's the big difference? What's the big change mentally or physically? Some Something that's a lot different now than it was uh, in, in your previous role. Um, just the players you guard to be a lot different, a lot bigger and stuff. So the beefiness, the the size yeah. that you're going up against. Yes. So as a as as a junior, a lot of these guys are seniors. Uh, like last night, you were dealing with Sheely. He's six five. Uh, you were having to body him around. That's got to be pretty tough. Yeah, you got to work hard, and you just can't let the other person bully you around. An inside position then becomes a real key. Yes. Yeah. Coach, uh, Jay, I was looking at your jacket. I love that. You got a basketball, you got a set of golf clubs, and you got a jet ski. Let's talk about, let's go backwards and talk about the jet ski first. Um, I race jet skis around the country. Wait, wait, wait. You what? I race jet he skis. He races jet skis. Uh, around the country? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was maximum speed, what, 20, 25 miles an hour? Um, uh, depends, but <laughs> the fastest I've been is about 80, 85 but the speed limit in I don't Indiana. drive a car that fast. Yeah. Are you get, did you get any tickets for that? Not yet. Tell me <laughs> Tell me about that. I, I have never How been. How did you get into that? Yeah. Um, Back in a long time ago, my dad, he used to race with his friend. And so now he's kind of got me, my brother, and a few other friends into it. So we all do it together. Is this an amateur thing or a professional thing? Um, A little bit of both. Really? Yeah. Tell me about how, how does I've never been to a jet ski race. Tell us a little bit about it. I mean, what do you? It's like a drag race or a slalom yeah, course. Yeah, you how does do by work? times or what? Um, it's a close course, and they like go out and they set up like buoys and like there's different colored buoys for which way to turn and stuff. And okay. wow, yeah. so it's kind of like skiing in that respect. Yes. Mm. A so bit. how many do you race against then at once? Or um, it... sometimes you could get in a class with about maybe only like four or six people but it can hold up to 18 in one race wow uh, aren't there a lot of wrecks and i was gonna say yeah. i'd be afraid you'd be running into each other um i have been fortunate enough to not get in any bad wrecks for the last couple of years but sometimes there be, can be a little minor bumps and stuff but that's about it wow. now this jet ski that you race is it a it, it can't be a normal jet ski um i mean pretty much it's a normal jet ski really yeah well, it's got to have some kind of a hopped-up engine. Jet skis don't go that fast usually, do they? Um, most of the classes we race, it's stock. We don't really touch the engine really? a whole lot. But, and then we got some other classes we can do some stuff to the engine. Do you do something for to guard your feet and legs? Um, on the sit-down, we can wear leg guards because people sometimes break their legs when they get T-boned or stuff See, like that. that's what I would be yeah. afraid yeah. of. Yes. And we have, we have to wear a helmet and a back protector. Wow. Okay. And I noticed on your picture you're standing up. So when you're racing, you don't sit down on the jet ski then. Oh uh, yeah, most time we're are standing up the whole time. And is there a balance thing involved there? I mean, uh, yeah, you got to be pretty balanced because like you move a little bit left, right, you fall over, tip over, and then you got to get back up and keep going. Wow. Tell me a little bit about your uh, your record. I mean, you're zero and what fifty for jet ski racing? Is that what? I, <laughs> yeah. Somebody yeah. said that. I was <laughs> out in the hall. No, go ahead and talk about it. Um. <laughs> I've probably been racing for a couple of years, so the place we are now, we've come a long way, and I've gotten a lot better, and we've been to the World Finals in Arizona about twice. The World Whoa. Finals? Yeah. In Arizona? Wow. A lot of people well, from yeah, all over. I heard you like, race at places like Lake Havasu yeah, that's, and stuff like that? That's the World Finals. Wow. wow. Well, how many places do you go, and where are they, um, roughly? Is there a, a season? Yeah, okay. that's it, uh, like a tour they have. All right, so uh, answer Coach's question. How many times a year do you do that and like that? Um, Probably, we go to probably about 10 maybe races a year, and then we'll have like a national championship and then like a world championship at the end. Hmm. Wow, have you been in the national championship? Yeah. He's been in the world. <laughs> and the world championship? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's got to be interesting. Where are those held? Um, National Championship. It's been in Louisiana the past couple of years. And then the World Championship. They're, the main one is in Arizona at Lake Havasu. And then the, probably the second smallest one is in Florida around Naples. Oh, hmm. my gosh. Well, tell me about the expense of doing this kind of a hobby. Um, Now it can get really expensive because the 
cost in buying a jet ski goes up and then you have to pay for gas to drive your truck and trailer all the way down but we're we're fortunate enough to get sponsored for um, oh really uh let's see a ga- uh like people that make gas gasoline for us uh-huh. so for we get free gasoline for all our jet skis so we don't wow. that, yeah so that is a really big help now what kind of gas do you use for the jet ski then i mean is that just um like- for the two strokes, we use just regular gas, like mixed with oil. And then for the four strokes, we put the engines on the dyno, and we were able to tune them to get ethanol and put ethanol in them. So it's an ethanol gas. Thing. Yes. And uh, you don't use the no ethanol. Okay. Wow. So let's talk a little bit of basketball. Well, wait, 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 oh, yeah. Bill. Okay, Coach. Look, we got we got golf. Oh, golf. You got to look you at gotta the jacket. You got to watch the jacket. You okay. got to look All at right. the jacket. Very good. So <laughs> golf, what's your role on the golf team? Um, well, freshman year, uh, golf was canceled due to COVID. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So sophomore year was my first year of golf, and I was, I think, number two on the golf team. Wow. Oh, wow. Sophomore. Yeah, behind a senior. So I think this year I should be put up to number one. Mm-hmm. Well, tell me, where'd you, how long did you get started? How far do you, be, what's your longest drive? What's your best putt? No, go ahead. Just talk uh, a little bit about that. You drive for show and putt um, for dough. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Yeah, we need that, putt for talk about the putt. Uh, I think I think my short game is pretty well, but mm-hmm. yeah, I can also I can hit the ball far. So do you like golf as well as this other stuff you're in? I yeah. mean, do you ever have time to go home and have dinner and go to bed and rest <laughs> and get up? You do uh, jet Simply goes that at 27 hours a day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit. How'd you get started in golf again? Um, I mean, once again, my dad he play golf in high school and stuff and so i've just kind of been around the golfing since i was little and stuff and i golfed in middle school so oh, do you like it yeah I, th- I think it's pretty fun oh wow well you got several chances to get scholarships then yeah you know golf and and then uh go ahead bill let's talk well about in addition in addition to that i know you've done some stuff as a varsity basketball player and in the program mentoring those younger junior warriors coming in talk about what you've done in the junior warrior program um yeah a lot of times we'll get called up to ref some of the little junior warrior kids and try to teach them and help them what's going on and we also got our basketball camp that we have for the younger kids and so mm-hmm. we get to be with them all week and coach them and help them a lot and i've heard that your role within that camp has been pretty pretty significant yeah yeah tell me how, how do you like that that's got to be a lot of fun, isn't uh, it? Yeah, I think it's pretty fun to see the smaller kids go out there and play basketball against each other. I think it's pretty fun to coach them and just, like, be around. And a lot of them, I know, will come to the games and come up to you after the games. And, you yeah. know, isn't that kind of neat? Yeah, Talk I think, it's, I think it's pretty cool seeing most of them at our games and watching us and supporting us. Oh, anyway. So, Jay, uh, in addition to uh, being a world traveler uh, yeah. and a uh, professional jet ski racer, and a basketball mentor and a golf aficionado i hear your grades aren't too bad either uh yeah i was last trimester i was on the ab honor roll and this year or this trimester look it's looking pretty good too so So. now how does all that funnel into what is of course the glowing orange orb of life in northern indiana basketball how does all that help you in basketball um it just it helps being focused and helps to get the job done because you got to be focused and try hard to get your good grades in. And so it's, you got to try hard to be good at basketball. So do, do you have any way that you want to proceed? Like, do you like your, your calculus classes and your physics class? No, I mean, just what, what generally do you Coach like? Just talking his book here. Yeah. That's what that is. Um, uh, what are your future plans? That's yeah, what that's what I should Where, where do you see yourself going from the, in your senior year and then on past that? Uh, next year, I th- uh, one of my difficult classes will be calculus, and I'm just taking that to get out of the way just in case I have to take that in college because most likely I'll go into a business major or something like that, so I just want to get calculus out of the way. Did you take stats, too? Uh, no, not okay. yet. Okay. Are you going to? Um, it is a possibility. Okay. What, what do you, so evidently you like math, and what are the other things you like? Like, uh, some of the, uh, chef classes that they have here and the building and trades. And, I took you know, professional huh? eating while I was Yeah, there. I did too. I like that. That was, that was, as you can tell, I still have, uh, been able to keep that class. Kaz and uh, I top the scales when it comes Yes, like way overweight, but go ahead. What are your favorite classes? What are your favorite classes? Um, I really like strength training right now. Mm-hmm. So, oh, wow. Yeah, weightlifting class. So, get me good... Uh, prepared for basketball that is really good where do you see this team 
as as a as a team uh, what do you see as um something we need to do maybe to move forward um i think one thing is well we're a really young team and we don't have a whole lot of varsity experience okay. so i think if we get once we get a lot of people playing varsity and like knowing knowing what's going on in the games, I think we can get a lot better and start beating some really good teams. You you recently, also relatively recently, made that big step from JV to varsity. How big a step is that? Um, I'd say it's a pretty big step because going from JV to varsity, it's a lot faster pace, a lot more talent. It's it's a it's a big step. Is the is the speed of the game is that is that the the big thing that changes or is there something else oh yeah the speed of the game it gets a lot faster a lot more running back and forth on the court and a lot faster paced do you go to any basketball camps in the summer then to kind of keep keep your skills up? um grace college Can... has a really good basketball camp for about a week it's an overnight camp I, that's probably my favorite one and what, what do they do there i mean just the same thing as in practice um or? well how, yeah. what makes it so good it's uh overnight camp so you're gonna be there all week and um they just do a lot of drills and stuff, and they have, like, a lot of their own, like, stuff they do. And then they come up with teams, and you play two nights a game, and they, like, feed you breakfast, lunch, dinner, and I think it's pretty cool. Wow, that's neat. And you get—do you see other kids from that camp that you play against? Uh, Yeah, a lot of times you'll see a bunch of kids from here around our schools, and then you'll see some from, like— a couple states over that came all the way over to wow. play. There are a lot of commonalities between what they do at Grace and what we do here at Wabba C basketball wise, aren't there? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, there is. Because Coach Everingham is really tied in with, uh, I think it's the former head coach now at Grace. He, I think he retired, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a the two programs, the, the the Grace stuff really reinforces what Coach Everingham tries to instill here at Wabba C. Yeah, and you know, also too, you're going to have to think about pretty soon. You'll have one more year to do it. But like, do you want to play college ball? Do you want to golf in college? Do you want to play basketball in college? Are you leaning toward anything like that right now, or um, tell me your mindset? As of right now, I don't. I don't think I'll play a sport in college so far. See, but now that's good. You're, you're thinking about this already. Where are you thinking about already. going? Um, or are you yet? One of the just like just some of the big ones in our state, like IU or Purdue or I stuff see. like that. Okay. Well, very uh, good. Yeah. Hey, Jay, I appreciate you coming in and being with us this morning. It's Jay Finlinson, one of the varsity basketball players here on the team at Wabasee High School. When we come back, we're going to talk to another player, Peyton Felger, who is a math expert because he had one of the best math teachers in the history of mankind. That would be me. Coming up in just a minute here on Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM, The Mix, and 937themix.com. Talking about the Wallace High School basketball program. Peyton Felger stopped by our studios here. Peyton, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. You've been getting more and more and more minutes with the basketball program as the season wears on, uh, coming off the injury from last year. Talk a little bit about what you see as your role on this Wallace Warrior basketball team. My role, I think, is just coming off the bench, doing what coach tells me to do. I can play either position. So I think whatever you just asked me to do, I go in and do it. Like, tell me, give me an example of what he has asked you to do. Where, and like uh, last night, I saw you got a little over four minutes in. What did he say last night to you when you went in? Go in, play hard defense, get a stop, box out, rebound, all the stuff like that. I forgot, who did you guard last night did, when you were playing one on one? Do you remember? Me, I guarded a bunch of different people different last night. people last night. Because that's got to be really interesting when he comes in. I mean, you know, you, you're getting quite a bit of time for sitting on the bench, you know, for being a bench fill-in. And to be able to go in and do what coach wants you to do, that's huge. You know, talk a little bit about that. How how does that run through your mind? And Mentally, how do you deal yes. with coming in off the bench? Mentally, coming off the bench, I just got to think about what position I'm in, what mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do. If I'm open, make a wide open shot, be able to drive, pass, pivot, all that stuff. Is it more difficult now that you're coming in for both post and guard? Yeah, it's quite a bit more difficult, like learning our sets and the mm -hmm. plays, because I got to know both positions, and I won't know which I'm in until I get in there. Mm. Do you watch? Does coach give you any hint about who you might? He probably doesn't, does he? Who you might replace? So, 
that's going to be kind of, do you watch the other team in case, well, in case I have to go in, I'm going to watch this guy or that guy, or do you just sort of concentrate on the whole opposing team? I mean, usually when I go in, the guy who I go in for, I just fill his spot. Fill his spot. Yeah. So, so it's so, not a lot of switching off yet. No, not really. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, tell me a little bit about your, uh, your background as far as uh, basketball. Uh, you know, one of the things, Bill, that I've talked about this, and here's a thousand and one, is this three point shot. Mm-hmm. I mean, that has just changed the game entirely. Except for Peyton, they've had the three point shot his entire life. Yes. Can you imagine? For me, it's changed. For, for us, it's been the last 15 minutes. Yeah. For him, exactly. it's his entire life. Tell me a little, do you, how, what do you, how do you work on that? And tell me about the skills that you like to work on to improve to be a, you know, a starter or a varsity player next year. I mean, a starter or varsity player. Um, I think I need to improve on my ball handling and my quickness on defense and just my strength. So, And how are you going to go about doing that? Probably work out some more, um, do some stuff over the summer, get like, ready for next year. Like what are you going to do over the summer? Are you going to go to any camps or anything like that? Uh, this year I probably will. I haven't in the past, but I'll probably will this week, this year. You know, one of the things when I would come up from Indy where my folks lived, you see kids playing ball all the time at every little parking lot and community center and whatever school. Now you don't see that anymore. I mean, do you still get out and play dirt ball at all or do any, does anybody do that anymore? Well, they got inside facilities everywhere. Yeah, that's true. But go ahead. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, like when we're out of season and stuff, I like to go to the community center with my friends. Just, Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. And, uh, do you, do you, like we used to play one-on-one really hard and we'd get games to play in three on three, just pick up ball all the time. Do you guys do any of that stuff anymore? Yeah, when I'm at the community center, we usually like switch up teams and stuff and just play. How hard has it been coming off the ankle injury? Because you oh, were out for a considerable period of time. That was one nasty injury you had. Um, it's gotten a lot better. I'll still like roll it sometimes and tweak it up a little bit. I can definitely tell it's different still, but. Yeah, it just came a long way. How hard has it been, though, to come from that now back into basketball? How has that changed? Um, last year I played a little bit after the injury. I was still, like, slow. Yeah, you really couldn't contribute it. too much because yeah. of it. This year it's gotten a lot better. I think I'm a lot better on it. It doesn't hurt as much. Are do you, you do, Are you finding yourself surprised at what you are able to do sometimes when you're out there? Or is it the other way where I thought I could get this done, but – the ankle stopped me um now it's a lot better i don't really think about it as it just much. doesn't occur to you at all that's yeah. the better part that's the best yeah. place to be are that's, you in physical therapy for it still or not uh no you're out of physical therapy so you're, it's all on your own now yeah hey, talk a little bit about your gray your studies what do you like about uh, school here um school i like being in strength training and all the classes i want to be in I'm doing pretty good in all my classes. So of course, far. you're doing fabulously in math with the tremendous background you had in the Bill Dixon School of Mathematics tutelage. Yeah, what, uh, what grade was that at, Bill? Well, let's see. I had you in eighth grade, and I also had you in ninth grade. Yep. Wow. And you're still around. And you, see, and you yeah. survived. And you, and you they still didn't take, throw him out after that. And you're still taking math classes. Yep. Wow. Well, he has to make up for everything I didn't do. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. What other kind of, so you like the strength, strength training. What else do you do? Um, what I'm else do you like? <clears throat> earth and space right now. Wow. What is that? that? Class. It's like we talk about just earth, not and earth. Space. Really, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like an astronomy class. Yeah. Wow. That is really interesting. Do you watch a lot of videos that are like here is Mars and... What do you do? Tell me, tell me a little about that course. Um, we just read a lot about all the different planets in our solar system and rockets and all that stuff. So you're going to be an astronaut down the road? Oh no, no, you're not going to be an astronaut. No. What are? What do you want to do? Me, um, after school, I want to graduate, go to college, and get a business major. Cool. What kind of business do you think you want to go into? I'm not quite sure yet. You know, that's one thing about Wawa C is they got all these programs where, Tons of you know, col- culinary and other yep. things like that, that, uh, you know, uh, mechanics that you can, uh, robotics is yeah. huge. A lot of kids in oh, robotics. And the engineering program. And here. the engineering yeah. program. Yeah, with the CAD CAM stuff. Yeah. So do you have any interest in any of the stuff that, uh, you know, Wawa C has uh, kind of like starter programs on? Um, 
I don't know. I really haven't been into any of them yet. Yeah. So your classes this year are pretty much fundamental and doing the things that you need to do to keep on moving on. So what what uh, what other classes you got now? You got math, what math class you taking now? Uh, algebra two. Algebra two, and then go ahead. What other classes you got? I'm in English. Now 11. tell me a little about your English class. Who's that with? Uh, Mrs. Bonner. And, oh, she's good. Yeah. So you're reading pretty <laughs> deep reading in those classes, right? Yeah. A lot a lot of literature there. Tell me about some of the stuff you've read there. Um, we've read like Native American literature and stuff oh, wow. like that. So how's that? What's that? I, it, like, like what? I, yeah. I can't even think of what that might be. It's interesting. It's a lot different from what you would expect. But, yeah, it's about the earth and how it was created. And so this stuff is like stuff that. that was written by Native Americans that's been translated for you? Yeah, stuff that was written, like, a long time ago. Okay. That's pretty neat. Yeah. I didn't know we even did that. No. That's pretty cool. So you've got, uh, is that a social studies class then? English. No, or English. That's an English class. Okay, what else? Uh, I'm in U.S. history. Ooh, tell me about that one. Um, that one's a lot of talking about wars and stuff and just like 1950s and 60s. And that's what where you're happened. at by now? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty late. You, I, we usually yeah. were only up maybe World War One by this point of the year. Yeah. But uh, there's, 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 there's all these extra centuries have been added on yes, since you and I were in school. Not, coach, especially so me. I understand. So. I get that. Anyhow. Peyton, athletically, basketball is the main thing you do, right? Yep. So it's sort of a year-round thing for you. Yep. Talk about the calendar and how you approach basketball through the year then. Um, and it probably starts at like, rather than starting in January, you're thinking about basketball probably starts at like in August 1 or, or when, you, when you're coming back into school, right? Yeah. Okay. So take it from that point. Um. When we come into school, I usually like going to the community center, practicing there, playing with my friends. But okay, so you're still doing your own thing at that point. Yeah. Okay. Until we get in season, there's not a lot of time to do stuff like that. And on the weekends, I like to rest. Mm hmm. So, yeah, it's really busy in season. So, your focus with the season, November 1? Beginning of November, because by Thanksgiving, we're playing games. Yeah, probably so, sometime around there. Okay, so somewhere, you know, Halloween, November 1, somewhere in there. And and then your focus changes at that point. Yeah. Okay. And talk about your in-season focus. Um, my in-season focus is coming into practice, ready to go, thinking about games that we have, thinking about what I can do, how I can do it better. How do you set those expectations? Do you have your own expectations or do you rely on the coaches more to help you set goals and stuff like that? I mean, since I can play basically every position, I like to see what the coaches tell me to do so mm -hmm. I can work on that and go in and do what they want me to do. Do you have particular individual goals that you're trying to hit by a particular date or is it more... Uh, uh, just go in and help, and, and you'll develop as that occurs. Yeah, I'm thinking about just going in and help, okay. and that'll develop. All right. So what's your best position you like to play? Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, you like to where play do you forward think you, or guard? Yeah. yeah, where do you think you contribute the most right now? Probably forward. I've been playing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And I'll bump Keaton down to a guard. So I'll take his spot. Oh, gotcha. That's, that's really good. Which allows him more ability to drive. He gets more driving opportunities than if you do that, right? Yep. Yeah. So when you go on your own, do you practice a lot like uh, three-pointers or do you practice foul shooting? Or what What do you do in practice? Yeah, what do you personally your, do when personally, you practice? Yeah, thank you, Bill. In practice, um, we shoot a lot. We work on a lot of defensive stuff. So what's your best skill, you think, as of right now in uh, basketball? Probably I mean, just, if you could go one on one against me, I know I would probably beat you really badly. I'm but thinking I thinking so. <laughs> yeah. I might have to. I'd have, I might have to dribble with my cane hand. Yeah, but there you go. Yeah, you get a hard time against Bill too. <laughs> so what? What? What are your ba basic skills? What do you think you? Where do you really uh, work at on the? You know, in, in your life as far as a basketball player. Um, probably just defense and being a physical player. Yeah, being a physical player is huge now. Mm -hmm. yeah, very, we watched that game yep. last night, yep. and that was really huge. And what, you think building up body wise is really going to help you with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me about this season so far. What have you when you started out, and 
where you're up to now. Just talk a little bit about the season and how it's gone for you so far. Um, I think I've developed a lot better as a varsity basketball player, and our whole team is developing right now. And we're getting to the point where I think that we can be a really good team. And going into sectional play, you think, well, we're not quite going into sectional play yet, but we're heading that direction. Where do you think the team's development is on the calendar right now compared to where you thought we would be? I think that we're about right on track. Okay. Very good. So you're liking, uh, I know it's always important, but are you liking uh, the, the teammates that you play with? Uh, I mean, I won't, I won't include uh, Finlinson in that. But since he's sitting right since here. Since he's sitting right here. But what about... <laughs> You guys seem like you have such, such good chemistry together, all of you. Yeah. Me and all my teammates, we were all really close. We all like, yeah. Do you guys hang out after the season's over and stuff? Uh, Some of us do, yeah. So what what, what do you guys do when you hang out? Or what are you doing, uh, uh, like, to help the camaraderie of the team? When we hang out? When you hang out, I mean, is this on your devices not talking to each other or... Oh, no. Sometimes we go to the community center. Other times we'll just, like, play games yeah. and compete in those games. Yeah, we used to do that. Play. We used to go play three-on-three three all the time somewhere. So. Hey, Peyton, I really appreciate you coming by. Peyton Felger of the Wabasu <laughs> Warrior Basketball Program, thanks for coming in and being with us today. Thank you. A couple quick me. reminders. We do want to remind you that the uh, Mishawaka basketball game, the Wabasu Mishawaka game, has been rescheduled. That is now back on the schedule Saturday, February the 5th. JV will play at 1 p.m. Varsity will play, you know, sometime following that, uh, 2.15, 2.30, somewhere around in there. Also want to remind you, we got the uh, hot shot and uh, free throw contest from the Kiwanis and the Knights of Columbus going on today out at Wabasee Middle School. Registration at 2, and they'll probably start shooting around uh, 2.30, somewhere around in there. When we come back... Coach John Abraham will rejoin us here on Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com as Coach John Abraham comes and rejoins us uh, here at uh, the Coach's Corner. Coach, a couple of very fine young men you brought with us today. I appreciate that. Peyton Felger. Jay Finlinson, it was great being able to speak with them. Yeah, those guys are solid, man. I, I tell you what, uh, as I sit here this morning and, and think about our team, and, and we're certainly disappointed that we didn't play as well as we wanted to, you know, last night at Plymouth. And, and we still got, you know, 10, 11, 12 games, you know, left in the season. But uh, you, sometimes putting things in perspective is important for a coaching staff and, and a team um, and, and maybe even a, a community in general that uh, – you know, the type of kids that we got out on the floor that, that care about basketball, they, they care about each other, and, and they care about our community. And, and I think, you know, these two guys are certainly, uh, you know, uh, some of our top representatives of, of our school mm-hmm. and, and what they do in, in the classroom and in their lives outside of basketball. Um, you know, sometimes when I get a little down and lose a little sleep over the way we played and uh, turn the ball over or whatever happens that maybe is not so pleasant. I'm certainly, uh, I certainly feel blessed that I, I get a chance to work with kids like those two guys and, and the rest of our guys. They're just good kids. Yeah. You know, they're, they're great kids. They're fun to be around. Um, you know, they, they work hard. They're, oh, they're, they're smart kids. They're, they're great grades. And, and they're eager to please, you know, they want to be good and, and they want to do the right thing. Um, and so, I just couldn't be more proud of our team, and, and, and these two guys, like I said, are, are just great representatives of our, our basketball program. Another uh, part of the program, certainly something to be proud of, your eighth graders at Wabasee Middle School, your combined eighth grade team, conference champions this year. You know, I think we, we dug into the record books, and I'm sure there's somebody out there that, that may know 100%, but uh, we believe that uh, the the – our eighth grade team, they're back-to-back conference champions um, in the last two years, so mm-hmm. their seventh and eighth grade year, is the first conference championships in school history. Mm. Wow. And so, um, and I asked uh, Jeff Carey, who's the eighth grade coach, and, and he said, absolutely. He goes, we just can't beat Warsaw. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, for our eighth graders this year, it's pretty exciting because, you know, uh, and forgive me if I say this wrong, but lakeview and edgewood yeah, warsaw yeah yeah basically warsaw's got two middle schools and and uh we 
uh, played last Saturday morning and beat Lakeview in a, in a pretty tight game. And Outstanding. Then, and then we're down, you know, we're down, uh, I think, <laughs> eight points to Edgewood uh, with about three minutes to go in the game and, and uh, take that game to overtime. And Excellent. Excellent end up beating them uh, for the conference championship and i can yeah, tell you bill you you'd be excited to see the the look on those warsaw fans yes, I would. Uh, yes he would as a matter of fact you should have seen if this were televised bill's look when uh, yes. you told him that we beat lakeland yeah so. Henry Smith, calm down. Yes. Calm down. Yeah, calm down, Bill. Calm you know, down. Bill, even to add to the story a little bit, we played Warsaw uh, uh, Lakeview on Tuesday. Mm. So our last three wins of the season for our eighth graders yes. were, were against the Warsaw team. So uh, wow. that, that, that is, it, it's, an, it's, a, it's a, an amazing accomplishment for that group. To that go, is good satisfaction. To go 16-2 and two, um, and to, to pick up three <laughs> wins against Warsaw at the end of the season. And I will tell you, too, um, our seventh grade team that we we were a little curious about their season and and they won 11 games you know mm-hmm. our seventh graders won 11 games made it all the way to the finals uh against edgewood um and uh, a team that had beaten them by 20 plus in the regular season you know we took a halftime lead in, into the second half over over at plymouth in the tournament so we got cool things going on yeah. we got a really good eighth grade team and a seventh grade team that's really developing uh, that we're going to keep a close eye on. So uh, congratulations to Jeff Carey and Jason Conley, the coaches of the eighth grade team. And it's, it's a really awesome accomplishment for them to, to come together and win that conference championship. Coach, uh, tell me about combining the schools yep. to have one – one team for how long have we been doing that this this year was the first year and and transportation and and uh everything got worked (laughs) out uh you know thanks to the the administration from you know milford and and wawasi working together to get that combined you know they also you know certainly they come to me and ask my opinions on on what i think about combining uh the middle school yeah and and uh you know the biggest thing for me was that the number of coaches that we have that are working with with the kids oh yeah you know if you have 10 kids from milford on a regular basis you know year in and year out and then you got 20 from over here i didn't want to combine and have one team of 18 yeah and then there's 12 kids that don't get a chance to participate that normally would have but right um you know dr troyer and and everybody involved in the process was like look we're going to keep the same amount of stipends the same amount of coaches and and you know i this is no joke and i've been telling you that the hair on the back of my neck stood up when i walked into the gym it was the tryouts and we had 50 plus kids in that gymnasium trying out for the seventh and eighth grade team oh, and wow. i'm telling you i'm th- just thinking to myself wow. i mean there are a lot of kids at the middle school level that, that really have a desire to be you know high school basketball players and and we know you know as adults it doesn't work out for every kid but you certainly um love when the administration and central office all come together to give those kids opportunities you know that that they want to have and so i think we were able to keep um right around probably 40 or 45 at the middle school level of seventh and eighth grade teams each had about 20 plus oh wow that many um, there's a lot of kids involved we set up a a separate b schedule Mm -hmm. you know so every kid got a chance to play and participate in games very active with that he was yeah that's huge isn't it you get a kid's chance to play yeah and so yeah again when they came to me and i said well if we do this this is how i would want it to look like they're like bam let's just do it that way and and so very uh um there's a high level of support you know from administration and central office about combining those and then also transportation you know getting kids from milford mm-hmm. to wallace middle mm-hmm. or the other way around yeah, right. playing games over there so overall i think it was uh, it was pretty good and uh you know we had the number of coaches that we needed and and uh, had a very successful middle school season excellent so this week your varsity junior varsity programs tuesday game uh take on bethany a team that really took it just as much as we could handle last year yeah uh you know you think bethany christian think small school and um um this, these guys come ready to play yeah they're going to and and i i mentioned last night on air and it's just the truth where we're at right now if we don't if we don't start practicing better and, and if we don't start executing you know better if we don't start getting the ball inside um we're gonna have trouble beating anybody on our schedule some games that people may circle as games that would be just easy for us to win um have not necessarily been the case in the past and then this year you know you got elkhart christian uh, who's been ranked in the top 15 in class a 
Um, they certainly got some talent coming back. And, and then Bethany has been developing over the last three or four years to where they're at right now. And, and they've been very competitive and had a couple big wins. They are in program building mode over there at Bethany. Yeah, they have. Yeah, Beck, they really are. Beck Willems is a four year starter um, um, and it's going to be a handful for us mm -hmm. to, to handle. They got a big kid, they got a nice point guard. Um, so we're going to have to play well to beat them. Now, if we do play well, I think we can take care of them, um, no question. But uh, coming off of a game where we didn't play real well, I think uh, that's kind of in question for Tuesday. So we got a work cut out for us, not only Tuesday night, but also um, against Concord and, and then Lakeland on the weekend. Well, and Concord here. Concord has been a program. They oh beat my. Warsaw last night, which makes them my second favorite team. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, they, um, they bring an awful lot of firepower to the table. They always do. Yeah, Col Coltukian. Yeah, you know, Coltukian is just unbelievable. Six foot seven, six foot eight. They have move Whoa. in from yeah. uh, they move in from um, uh, Elkhart that's playing really well for Concord them. Concord gets another 20. move in. Yeah, it, it, can't we just start taxing them on this or something? I mean, it, <laughs> they get so many tag, of these yeah, move yeah. ins. Yeah, we start with a uh, six month lead. Provide us a player to be named later or something. Yeah. I'm, well, you I'm know, that's kind of interesting. When that came about, is now you can go anywhere in the state of Indiana you want. You know, without paying tuition. Well, I remember you can a guy that moved in here from the Bahamas and played. Yeah, in but I mean, that's a different story. You, you know, you're not if you live in what was the area, you can go you anywhere. Play for the Celtics, vice versa, or vice versa, or vice it, versa. It is a ever changing landscape yes. of uh, of high school athletics. I will just put it this way, without getting into the weeds on this one. Oh, I want to hear the weeds. <laughs> yeah, Go yeah, on. I know. Uh, the, the, there are surrounding schools that uh, that 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 don't have homegrown, you know, kids in their on their high school varsity basketball team, some of the best teams in our area. Um, and so, you know the thing that I like about Wawasee? They're homegrown kids. They They're are. our kids, and, and uh, certainly nobody's accusing us of recruiting and uh, bringing in kids from the outside. Mm -hmm. um, these are our kids. They live here. That's right. They've gone to school here. That's and, right. And uh, um, I'm very proud to say that uh, when we start winning, and we start winning in a big way, I'm certainly going to advertise these are homegrown Wallace C kids. 100%. Yeah, that is neat. You betcha. What, what, what will hell happen if you just, if other kids decide that, gosh, Wallace C's winning, they got this great every name for a coach? Yeah. What will happen if other kids want to move in here? Well, I want to we'll, hear this. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly, uh, I, here's the thing. I will tell you this too with our CTE stuff that's going on. Oh, yeah. In our, in our school, uh, our Wallace C <laughs> High School, and the great things that are going on beyond. You know the basketball uh, right, program. Right, I forgot about that. I wouldn't blame somebody for moving here and being a part of our community. So we and, would welcome them with open arms. And coach, what you're talking about happens every oh, day in South Bend. It does. They trade oh, yeah, schools up over. there like people play trade yeah. baseball cards. Yeah. I mean, they just go from one to another to another to another. Yeah. And that's the relatively new rule, but uh, I still think you know where before you had to do a lot of stuff to get to be able. To oh do yeah, it. a lot of hoops. now, a lot of hoops. Now you can just do it, hmm. and uh, it, I think it's just kind of interesting and i don't know i don't think i would like it but go ahead coach yeah no i i think we'll, we'll cross that bridge when, when we get there but the only thing i, I think <laughs> i would comment on that is to, is to say i wouldn't blame them you know yeah. i wouldn't blame them because i i like where we are i like where i live and i love the kids that we have and i love the school that we have and so i certainly wouldn't blame you know people for looking at um you know wawasee as a as a place to live and a place to go to school and, uh, you know, if they happen to play basketball, then we'll, we'll take a look at that, too. And that Concord game is the Kosciuszko County Cancer, Cancer Care Fund game where um, Concord and Wabasee, both student bodies, both schools coming together to raise money uh, to fight cancer. It's sort of an all-for-one type deal. In fact, that's what it's being billed. And I know uh, the radio station's very involved. They're having a radiothon and if you're listening online at uh, 937themix.com, there's a button you can push and uh, make a donation even right now to the Kosciuszko County Cancer Care Fund. And I know the basketball team is also going to be involved in that. Absolutely. We're always up for, you know, raising money for, for a good cause and, and certainly promoting things for a good cause. And and uh, d just like I said, you know, uh, d just very proud to be a part of Wallace High School and and in this particular case, I think uh, Devin Van Lu and the drama mm -hmm. the drama mm -hmm. club mm -hmm. job. set this all up. You walk down the hallways and you see all the the posters and and all the advertisement for something like this, and it's all for a good cause. And I know we've had, 
you know, some staff members that have kind of gone through the, the, the battle with cancer. And, mm -hmm. and I think uh, Amy Miller is going to speak at, at the halftime. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Miller, mm -hmm. our English teacher here, is going to speak at halftime, you know, the basketball game. So I think if you're in for a feel-good night, uh, uh, Friday night would be a great night to come and support a good cause, catch a good, catch a good basketball game, and wear purple. Uh, oh, purple. purple. Go purple to fight cancer. And, Coach, oh, wow. uh, not only is it going to be a feel-good night, it's going to be a fill-well night. The ice cream machine yes. is coming back, and I know that I heard, excites you tremendously. Oh, man. You know, you can tell just by looking at me. Yeah, I love ice cream. <laughs> Anything sweet. But ice cream, oh, I wonder if they'll have enough. You think that Enough might, for you and yeah, me and yeah, everyone else? Everyone, I don't know. That's a lot of ice cream. I know that. Uh, a lot of <laughs> yeah, be sure. Yeah, we got somebody here that knows the Van Luke kids, so make sure he uh, orders enough that yeah. uh, can yeah. satisfy or please both Bill and me. So basketball uh, mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, we've got the uh, Bethany game and the Concord game this week. We also want to remind you a change in the calendar because of the COVID situation. One game has had to be rescheduled. That is the uh, Mishawaka game, and that game will be here at Wawasi on Saturday, February the fifth. At 1 p.m., JV at 1, varsity to follow, figure eh, probably 215, 230, somewhere around in there. And uh, we will have it here, you, here for you. Uh, and it will also be televised on uh, the um, uh, uh, on CPG uh, TV. So, appreciate Coach. Thanks very much for coming in this morning. Thank you. This has been Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM, The Mix, and 937themix.com, WRWTLP, Syracuse.